Good evening, my name is Rola Farhat and this podcast will exhibit the requirements of assignment 2. To start off a brief introduction of the subject, I will firstly discuss looking at the K-6 PDHPE syllabus. NESA 2018 reflects how the curriculum allows learners to practice and understand the concept of health in a changing and developing society. Students build knowledge and skills to critically analyze health and movement concepts and to participate in a range of physical activities. The skills that are learned from PDHP allow students to demonstrate these abilities in everyday life. In 2014, according to Knitschnik and Curry, children need the value of lifelong physical activity to be instilled in them at a young age. The PDHPE curriculum aims to let this value happen through its objectives and aims, such as developing interpersonal skills and demonstrating strategies that help learners support their and others' health, proving that this subject matters beyond school due to its value of allowing children to promote a sense of identity. Moving on to the explanation of the Game Sense approach, which is a student centered approach to teaching, one can observe that it is a collaborating and communicating experience for students. In 2012, Light in his book Game Sense observes this approach and describes it as being a groundbreaking method to physical education. The approach encourages students to develop skills in a realistic context and to make better decisions. In a journal found in Flinders University in 2011, Pill demonstrates that GameSense has been recognized as effective in the teaching in games and sports and is also consistent with teaching for the outcomes in the PTHPE syllabus. In other words, GameSense allows students to engage in modified game strategies that help develop skills, promote their thinking abilities, and understanding of the game. These modifications allow teachers to accommodate for a variety of abilities, which helps increase challenge and involvement in the classroom. Moreover, the game sense approach can be shown to be linked to the PDHPE syllabus through the methods it presents. An example would be a stage 2 PD2-4 outcome, which is to perform and refine movement skills in a variety of sequences. Manipulation of the tasks of the game to challenge the learner, such as using two balls instead of one in soccer, or increasing the size of the goal on the playing field, demonstrates these movements. Also, in modified games, throwing and catching a ball with students' hand or foot demonstrates an example of these skills. The game sense approach can be demonstrated through the correct use of sports equipment and the learning of new skills. I will now discuss the personal reflections of four different tutorials. I will firstly state that the tutorials given allowed me to gain a different perspective on how teachers and students should view PDHPE, especially in week four during the face-to-face tutorial. We got a feel of what students will be learning during such activities. The games we participated in allowed us to feel engagement, empowerment, and ownership of our own selves. Every member participated in something and did not wait for their turn, but instead was focused on a task that required a certain skill. A game presented where members of three played a fox, mouse, and farmer were each were allocated to focus on either playing, protecting the mouse, going after it, or playing the mouse itself and trying to escape. This activity alone demonstrated how locomotor object control and stability skills are combined to complete a movement such as swerving, sidestepping, and running, which can be linked to the PTHPE syllabus through NESA 2018. 
Being able to play these games as if a primary learner would allows room for understanding that through these approaches, tactical awareness and decision-making skills are exhibited. In 2014, Stolls and Pill discussed the importance of questions which help guide the development of game understanding and skill practices during lessons. During each physical activity that was given in the week for tutorial, a few minutes of reflection and questions were imposed by the teacher at the end of the game. I felt that this technique allowed me to focus on PDHPE on something being not just physical, but also a skill that helps an individual understand the significance of factors that include health and participation. Other games such as ball tag were interesting to experience since the focus was on imagining, imagining we were in a primary setting. The class got to understand spatial awareness and how learners could be able to focus on balance and coordination throughout the playground. Being asked to assess how we could modify the games we participated in also gave me insight as to how a future teacher should view these experiences, always thinking about enhancements and how to challenge students. The tutorial in week 5, which was moved to online due to the weather, still gave me a sense of the physical education concept needed to gain better perception in my learning. I was able to observe invasion games in action in breakout rooms through videos where discussions took place that gave me a clearer insight towards modifying games and its benefits to students. Those benefits include social, emotional, and developmental skills for learners, especially during such a young age. I found to understand how physical education can cater to all needs of every person and it is not only for those who have a stable and healthy well-being. Liberman and Houston Wilson in 2000 agree with this through explaining how individuals have the same potential for developing motor skills and fitness. But then it depends on how certain skills and opportunities are provided to them throughout their life. Furthermore, the Sport Oz website also provided me with a better understanding of how games can be adapted to different types of sports and even how to think about creating a challenging environment for children. Games such as striking and fielding are shown to be modified through movement skills of rolling and kicking to pass the ball to fielders. Ideas of how inclusivity can be used was shown through various games such as making sure all students touch the ball by it being passed to one another. This site intrigued me. Due to the variety of skills it presents, future teachers to choose from. I found that the cards are a great resource to giving teachers and students challenging ideas which could be added to what the curriculum requires. Numerous ideas which did not occur to me before have now been a focus to how physical education should be taught. An example would be asking students what modifications they believe will enhance their learning to a game. Additionally, thinking about activities that develop skills from challenging to less challenging was a bit of a task I enjoyed, for I was able to cognitively prepare how teachers think of how skills should be organized and introduced to students' learning. Moving on to another tutorial, week two, where we unpacked the PDHPE syllabus, was where my first insight changed regarding what physical education can actually offer to, to students. My background as a learner who was taught PDHPE in school was completely different to how these tutorials were demonstrated and therefore allowed me to have a positive insight towards the concept. Details such as delving into the skills it provides students in a class through certain approaches changed my perspective towards how it should and can be taught. 
Outcomes that focused on a person's qualities, such as recognizing a student's characteristics, which make them similar and different to others, displays how PDHPE is more than a physical sport. Looking and reflecting at the outcomes of the curriculum should be discussed with students during activities and games. For example, before preparing for a game of OSTAG, an explanation of what outcome learners are to display would help them focus as to what they are gaining in learning. To add on, as a young student, I remember we were not given insight towards the PDHPE curriculum and only participated in the basic standard games taught to us. Looking at the syllabus gave me a different perspective as to how important it can be to a primary student's young self. In 2006, Allinger et al. encourages that young children should experience with various activities instead of the main skill and focus being to compete and win. Lastly, the tutorial in week three where planning for HPE teaching occurs. I found that the planning cycle for quality teaching was one of my main focuses. Looking at this cycle shows how quality teaching and assessing should occur. I realized that through planning and programming to allow students to demonstrate their deep understanding of lessons, classroom practices could be demonstrated smoothly and positively. In 2010, Kremen and Arthur suggest that weekly plans should be broken down and taught in a way where children can achieve the learning objectives. I also reflected on how students at a young age ask themselves various questions, including how the teacher perceives them and how important the learning of PDHPE can be through the lessons and inquiries of a teacher. That is why when looking at steps to programming a unit of work in PDHPE, I found that the key inquiry questions are vital. For a learner to, de to delve deeper into physical education and what it can do for them. After finishing this tutorial, I realized the impact of how inquiry questions can help set the stage to the main focus of the lesson and how learners benefit from such queries by thinking further than their murder skills. Questions such as, do you know what to teach me? And, do you know me? Allowed me to remember that when teaching, one should always try to think about how young learners are thinking and responding before a lesson starts. I will be implementing such strategies in my future classroom with a focus on including the students in how I should plan my classroom practices. All in all, through my participation throughout this semester, I have learned that PDHPE is something more than just a physical type of sport and that it can relate to many educational concepts. I believe that through realizing this, my approach to teaching PDHPE will focus on each student's needs in reaching their potential, especially to those who dislike the KLA. The learning activities showed me how one can integrate and challenge students by catering to their requirements and that such approaches, like the Game Sense approach, allows the class environment to respect and include each other in their learning. Prior to how I felt about this subject before this course, I now believe that it is something more than what I have been taught as a young child and that teaching this subject will allow me to make sure that other learners do not go through the dislike I experienced. In, order, in other words, what I have learned in this course has given me enthusiasm to teach PDHPE in a class full of young students. Thank you.